alchemy and archetype. Let us pause for a moment and describe in detail the persona. From the viewpoint of Jung, every individual on Earth is either consciously or unconsciously playing a social role. Wearing a mask, a facade, a character in order to function in daily life. According to Carl Jung, these parts we play are the persona, a metaphor derived from the days of Rome. It's really quite simple, sometimes even obvious. In order to be a functioning member in society, one must appear in some mask or another. Rejecting these roles is just another choice, another mask, another persona representing rejection. Most of these masks are meaningless, culturally correct clothing for our consciousness. However, some of our personas are deeply personal, at times even pathological. Take for example some of the mana personalities, or super personas, in the world around us today. The many masks that men and women wear. The fool, the prophet, the victim, the sage. Politicians, presidents, and performers on stage, all with behavior patterns and characteristics unique to the role they play. To become individuated is to understand how and when to put on and take off these masks in which life requires us to wear. When in Rome, do as Romans do. I know it's not so easy as these roles run deep. Each persona or archetype has individual desires dreams, dangers, morals, and values. Today, more than ever, we are able to don digital masks. It's becoming a masquerade party in the metaverse. So remember, Jung made it clear when he stated, and the last analysis of every life is the realization of a whole, that is, of a self. For which reason this realization can be called individuation. All life is bound to individual carriers who realize it, and it is simply inconceivable without them. But every carrier is charged with an individual destiny and destination, and the realization of this alone makes sense of life. So you see, the key is to operate from your own center, inside out. Always, in all ways. We each contain the psychological potential to personify each archetype. Every god and goddess is within. When we realize how these energies manifest in our daily lives, we can add another dimension to reality, a creative interplay with the roles we play. The result of this integration can lead to a better understanding of ourselves as we wear the masks of the healer, the leader, or the lover. Our persona also affects our personal style and appearance. An empath or introvert will usually dress in blues and beiges, a loner and lunar in character, no matter male or female. Whereas the alpha or extrovert wears more reds and relates to Aries or Mars. Knowledge of the various archetypal forms helps our ego determine what in life is personal and human. We can start to see how the mythic themes and archetypes like Hermes, Athena, and Zeus operate in our daily lives. This is what I would call mythical living. Using the meaning of each mask, each myth, as a way to dig deeper into awareness. Activating our imaginations, widening our range, it is a type of active reflection. Mm -hmm. 
mythical living will not show us our own centers, but reveal to us alternate routes, other roads, other roles to play on the stage of life. Myths aren't just fairy tales, they are metaphors explaining the mysteries. Lies that tell the truth, just like you and me. Something that never happened, but always is and always was. So let me allow Joseph Campbell to have the last word on the subject of myth, stating this. Myth is much more important and true than history. History is just journalism, and you know how reliable that is. The images of myth are reflections of spiritual and depth potentialities in every one of us. Through contemplating those, we evoke those powers in our own lives to operate through ourselves.